Movie footage used in the kill count is owned entirely by the copyright holders. Dead Meat makes no claim of ownership and simply uses the footage for purposes of education, commentary, and criticism under fair use. Please support filmmakers and the art of filmmaking by watching Predator in its entirety using the links in the description below. Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Predator, the action sci-fi horror film released in 1987. Predator is a testosterone-fueled adventure featuring a whole bunch of guns and raging biceps from the likes of Arnold Schwarzenegger, Carl Weathers, and Jesse the Body Ventura. But it wasn't just all the muscles and guns that led to the movie's box office success. The Predator creature, designed by Stan Winston and played by 7'2 Kevin Peter Hall, was instantly iconic, with its camouflage, its shoulder cannon, its blade gauntlet, and its penchant for fishnetted attire. The fascination with Predator would go on to fuel a couple film sequels, a whole bunch of comic books and video games, and a well-known rivalry with the Xenomorphs from the Alien series. But before Predator was ever fighting Xenomorphs, one of them had to face down Arnold Schwarzenegger in the jungle. How many people died in that encounter? Let's find out and get to the kills. The movie begins with a spaceship that does a flyby crop dusting near the Earth, dropping off a little Predator package that hurls down through the atmosphere. As we'll come to learn, it lands in the Central American jungle, near where this helicopter is touching down, to unload over half a ton of manliness. Last off the chopper is Major Alan Dutch Schaefer, played by future governor of my fair state, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Dutch is there to meet with this guy, Major General Phillips, and his fellow bicep support system, Dylan, played by Carl Weathers. You son of a bitch. After a little bit of mid-air arm wrestling, Dylan and Phillips tell Dutch that they need him and his men to go into the jungle on a mission. Dutch agrees, as long as it's not a murder mission. We are rescue team. Not assassins. Those sidelong glances between Dylan and Phillips are pretty suspicious, but they assure Dutch the mission is only to rescue a government cabinet minister whose helicopter recently crashed on the wrong side of the border. Now, the movie never specifies the countries involved here, but apparently they're being briefed in Guatemala for a mission into the fictional country of Valverde, so the more you know. A pair of helicopters blare some Little Richard as Dutch's boys are introduced through a bunch of quirky character traits. For instance, Pancho, the team's demo man, loves a real fierce looking face paint, while tracker Billy prefers a much simpler shoe polish approach to camouflage. Meanwhile, radio operator Hawkins, played by the normally writer-director Shane Black, likes to tell dirty jokes. The other day, I went up to my girlfriend. I said, you know, I'd like a little pussy. She said, me too. Mine's as big as a house. The last two team members are Mac, who enjoys shaving his already bare skin, and the heavy Blaine, played by Jesse Ventura. These two guys love each other and hate Dylan, who's accompanying the squad for the mission, but who they see as a pencil push and fed. The men get to their drop-off position and descend into the jungle, where they won't have any support until they get back out to a pickup point. It doesn't take them long to find the cabinet minister's crashed helicopter, and after Poncho checks the inside, we get our first kill to add to the count. This dude who, uh, I don't know, what was he, the pilot? Let's say it was the pilot. We can call him Pilot Pete. Billy follows some tracks from the crash site to find a gnarly skinned body hanging upside down from a tree alongside two of its equally skin deprived friends. Yo, that's nasty. They make it in the jungle. After someone kicks this real life bird for real, like what the fuck guys? Dutch reads the corpse's dog tag to discover one of the bodies was Jim Hopper, a green beret that he knew personally. Shady shit, but Dylan denies knowing why they would be out there. Yeah, okay Dylan. Pissed about the treatment of fellow American servicemen, the boys break out their big gun, Old Painless, and set out to kill the gorillas that they assume did this, not knowing they're being watched from above by the real culprit, a thermal track and predator. When they reach the gorilla base, Dutch shows some surprising grace for a man his size as he army crawls over to a nice little spying spot. Through his binoculars, he witnesses our fifth kill of the movie, an American hostage who gets executed by a Soviet dude. And why is there a Russian in the jungles of Central America? This is the Cold War, motherfucker, that's how they do! Dutch's friends have an army crawl party and join him by the log, where he tells them it's time to move in. The gorilla lookouts prove to be no match, maybe because it seems like they're facing their own base instead of out towards the jungle. But in any case, one gets his neck broken by Billy, another gets stabbed in the neck by Mac, and a third is killed without any flair by Blaine after he's tossed aside. Dutch moves into the gorilla base, unbelievably unseen by frickin' anyone there, and straps some C4 inside the back of a truck. After he deadlifts the vehicle off of a log, he pushes it straight towards the gorilla base, kicking off my least favorite scene I've ever had to kill count. The rules I'ma follow here are simple. I'll count anyone I see getting shot, or very much on fire, or doing the 
stunt actor airflip thing that 80s action movies relied on way too much. With those rules in place, the gorilla strike scene starts with a whopping 54 kills, beginning with the nine dudes blown up by Dutch's truck bomb. The rest of the casualties in this four minute action scene are killed by grenades thrown, grenades launched, random fires from explosions, and of course, a whole bunch of guns. From the rifles that most of the team uses, to the M134 minigun that Blaine is walking around with, a weapon that's usually mounted on a helicopter, but in this case, it's just mounted onto Jesse Ventura's 6'4", 250 pound body frame. I've gotta admit, I really can't stand action scenes like this. They're very boring to me, partially because there's never a good sense of space. It's just close-ups of dudes firing guns and close-ups of dudes getting shot. Just so many dudes getting shot. And explosions, gotta have lots of explosions. And while I love a good stunt performance, it's like I said before, the air flip thing is used way too much and always looks the same, like a controlled fall onto a cushion just off screen. I also hate the lack of stakes in scenes like this. You're never worried that anyone on Dutch's team is in real danger. All that being said, the thing that makes Predator awesome is that it uses this scene to make you think it's going to be a simple action movie like Commando, right before it switches gears and becomes a monster stalking slasher in the jungle. Because of that, I'm okay with all this, and it's really that fake out that makes this movie so damn brilliant. Plus, who doesn't like a good Arnold one-liner? Stick around. Dutch uses another one-liner when he finds the Russian advisor dude. Knock, knock. And then proceeds to shoot the shit out of him and another gorilla in the room who was helping the Soviet destroy classified papers. Then Dutch looks out the window and sees another four dead bodies that we can go ahead and add to the list there. The last kill of this whole crazy sequence gives Blaine and Poncho a chance to get their one-liners in as well. Son of a bitch is dug in like an Alabama tick. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed after Poncho fires a trio of grenades at a dug-in gorilla. You got time to duck? And might I say, I absolutely love the shot of Poncho grinning like a jackal as dirt falls around them. Dutch avoids being added to the kill count himself when he foils an assassination attempt by a woman named Anna, who he knocks out for the time being. That's when Mac comes in to tell him that the hostage we saw get executed was CIA, like Dylan. So it turns out this mission wasn't about a foreign cabinet minister at all. That revelation really sets off Dutch. You sell so bullshit. Yup, Dutch's old buddy Dylan just just used them as assassins to stop a communist insurgency from taking over the country. A mission Jim Hopper was originally sent to do, but, uh, you know, obviously it didn't go so well for him. So he cooked up a story and dropped the six of us in a meat grinder. They head out towards a pickup point, with Dylan dragging Anna along because she might have information. All the while, they're being observed by the Predator, who starts reading their sound waves in order to learn their words and noises, like this hearty laugh from Billy after another one of Hawkins' vagina jokes. <laughs> Their path to the pickup point for the chopper takes them through a deep, lush valley that leaves them soaked in sweat. That's what Hawkins said. As they get deeper, Tracker Billy gets real spooked, but can't exactly say why. He stares at the trees and sees nothing, but correctly senses that something is out there. Anna takes advantage of the distraction to blindside Poncho and make a run for freedom. Hawkins manages to catch up and stop her, but as he's kindly asking her at gunpoint to stop making noise, the Predator comes out of nowhere in its crazy camouflage and kills him with a slash, then grabs his corpse with a cloaked hand and drags it away through the jungle. Shortly after, Poncho and Dutch find what remains of Hawkins, and it's not a lot. Nothing worth sending back home, anyway. Anna tells them in Spanish that the jungle came alive and took Hawkins, which, like, dude, I believe. There is no better place to get yourself killed than walking around in deep jungle. You ever see planet Earth? That shit's crazy! There are snakes everywhere, and even worse, friggin' predators! Which Blaine discovers firsthand when a plasma blast hits him in the back and blows a hole straight through him. <laughs> what does that make him now? Jesse Nobody Ventura? Mac runs to his best bro's side, and sees the shimmering predator standing there, eyes all a-glowing. Well, I tell you what, one look at that and I'ma fire my gun! Which Max starts doing immediately, managing to hit the predator and cause some glow stick blood to leak out onto a leaf. Then there's what feels like 10 minutes of everybody just lining up and firing their weapons at trees. Yep, just, uh, a lot of gunfire. Oh, what, Dylan, you didn't get the memo? Better catch up with all that gunfiring, mister. And sure, launch a few nades while we're at it. Whatever keeps the party going. When the guys are all done, they've wrecked this rainforest like the humans in Fern Gully, but it doesn't look like they hit anything at all, since there's no body in sight. Except for Blaine's. His body's still there. Sorry, Mac Attack. Anna grabs some of Predator's blood for a glow-in-the-dark finger painting project she's been working on, and then they all booby-trap the shit out of a defensive position with flares and claymores. Even with all that in place, Billy's still got the heebie-jeebies. There's something out there waiting for us. 
and it ain't no man. Elsewhere, that no man decloaks for the first time, giving us some close-ups on its awesome frickin' design as it heals the wound on its leg with tools from a little med kit. And we even get a full body shot when it yells back in pain from its self-repairs. That night, Bill Duke gets a chance to stretch his acting muscles as he gives a sweaty soliloquy to the moon about how much he misses Blaine. Their traps get activated, but it turns out the thing that tripped their wires and is currently getting stabbed like a psycho by Mac was just a big jungle pig. Pumba, no! The next day, Anna reveals that she can speak English, and after Dutch cuts her free so she can help them defeat this thing, she tells them about the blood she found. If it bleeds, we can kill it. Time for another muscle montage, as everyone sets up even more booby traps for another defensive position. Dylan is skeptical of the plan at first, but in no time at all, he's stripping down and joining the bicep boys in the rigging of the jungle. Then it's time to just stay put and shave the sweat away. Oh Mac, you missed a spot. Eventually, after Dutch steps out from their hiding place, a net trap is activated and pulls an invisible predator up into the trees. The warrior alien shoots free of the trap and sends a tree branch swinging down that hits Poncho right in the face. Invisible predator swings away through the trees with its wacky looking effect that Dylan sees, finally turning him into a believer. Get a load of what it looks like without the cloak, Dildog. Crazy, right? If you're wondering how they did the camouflage technique, it's actually pretty interesting. First, they filmed a dude in an all red suit, since red is the opposite color of all the green that surrounds them, and then they'd key out the red and film the same camera movement with a wider angle, and the combined shots gave us this. Fun fact, Jean-Claude Van Damme was originally the guy in the suit until he realized his face wouldn't get seen and he quit. Kevin Peter Hall took over, and he honestly seems like such a sweetheart. Hi, Mom. Is what, what, what that mom out there? Yeah, mom that's, there? that's my mom. That's what are you your doing? mom? What are, what are you doing here in the middle of Mexico? It's truly a shame that he died tragically young at the age of 35. Rest in peace, big guy. Mac runs off to chase the bro-killing alien, and Dylan follows after him so he can have a good character redemption moment. He's gonna have his hands full with old Big Mac, though, since the guy is fucking losing it, singing Long Tall Sally to himself as he strips down and climbs a hill after the predator. I'm gonna have me some fun. I'm gonna have me some fun. I'm gonna have me some fun. You know what, I'm not sure, but I think Mac's gonna have him some fun. The fun involves a plan with Dylan to flush out the predator and kill him. But I'll give you two guesses on whether or not this goes well. Hope you guessed no, because when Mac is trying to stealthily make his way towards the predator, he looks up to find a trio of red dots on his arm. You done fucked up, Mac. You know that, don't you? You know you done fucked up, don't you? If he didn't, he finds out shortly when his freaking head gets blown up. Yeah! Too bad when Dylan comes across Mac's body later, there's way too much head left intact for the initial effect we saw. Oh well. Dylan spins around after hearing Mac's voice because the Predator is now replicating the sounds it's recorded. When he sees those glowing eyes, Dylan goes to shoot only for a plasma blast to blow off his friggin' arm. There's an unforgettable shot of the gun still firing while the severed arm holds it before Predator does a runaround and kills Carl Weathers off with its blade gauntlet, another great Predator weapon. As the others make their way through the jungle, Dutch tells Anna not to take any weapons, figuring that the Predator didn't kill her before because she was unarmed. No sport. As they cross a log bridge, Billy stops and turns back, determined to face the the predator head on, with no gun, no shirt, and only the service of this big ol' hunting knife. But it turns out, Predator's not interested in a drawn-out fight just yet, because the remaining survivors hear Billy scream behind them, giving him an unfortunate off-screen death, though we will see a body a bit later. But for now, we've gotta add my boy Poncho to the list, cause Predator appears in a tree next to them and fires a plasma shot straight into the side of Poncho's head, putting him down for the count. Another plasma blast hits Dutch right in the rifle, and from the ground, he yells out his iconic catchphrase to Anna. Get to the chopper! Yeah, Anna, go on and get to the chopper! Dutch runs through the jungle with the predator literally hot on his trail until he slips and slides down a little bank, straight off a cliff, where a weirdly blurry, zoomed in or something shot follows a likely stunt double as he falls into the water below. But Dutch isn't done falling just yet. He floats down the river and over a frickin' waterfall. That's right, this dude just went over a waterfall without even a barrel to ride in. Awesome. He swims ashore, straight into a muddy bank, and after the predator drops into the river behind him, Dutch makes a real mess as he crawls to get away. But it's a good thing he did, cause after Predator's cloak short circuits from the water and he leaves the lake to look for his muscly foe, he's unable to detect him, even when he's looking right at him. Because that mud is not only exfoliating the shit out of Dutch's skin, it's also hiding his heat patterns from the Predator's thermal vision. So Predator just skips away angrily. He couldn't see me. Dutch quietly said to himself. We get our third booby trapping sequence of the movie as Dutch lays out his final plan of attack against the Predator that involves a bunch of spikes and a big old tree trunk rigged to fall. While he does that, Predator goes through his own pre-fight ritual by taking Billy's corpse and ripping out his frickin' spine and, uh, strangely small skull. Both of the warriors' respective skull duggeries take them well into the night, cause this is a prime time matchup if I've ever seen one. With the lighting of a torch and a Tarzan yell, Dutch invites the Predator to come out and play. <laughs> Ha! <laughs> 
And who could say no to that? Not Predator, he's all about this life. So he sets out after using his lasers to, uh, what, I guess repair his smart wristband he's got there? That must be what he's doing, because we see he's able to cloak again when he winds up crawling past the invisible to him Dutch headed towards a big bonfire. Dutch swings away from him and gets to tree hugging in true Arnold fashion, then fires an arrow with a gunpowder tip right at a pack of explosives the Predator is near. That breaks Predator's gear again and sends him into a plasma firing rage that appears to hit everything in this damn jungle except for Dutch. Kind of a big ass target for you to miss there, Predator, but I'll just chalk it up to you being on tilt since your shit got wrecked for the second time this day. Ballet-trained Kevin Peter Hall lends a real nice physicality to Predator as he hops down a cliff looking for Dutch, but Dutch trolls the alien hunter by hiding beneath a bridge and then by throwing another one of those explodey tipped spears at him. He tracks the injured Predator from his glow-in-the-dark blood that's starting to seem like a real liability here, but Predator is still able to get the jump on him and fire a shot that sends him into another body of nasty jungle water. Not only is that thing likely to have leeches, it also rinses all of Dutch's mud camo away, and so Predator is able to find him and pin him up against a tree, showing off the 12 inches of height difference between the two. But instead of killing him right there, Predator steps away to give Dutch a worthy fight, since he's finally found another hunter he can respect. To show his respect, he even decouples his mask and removes it from his head to show off the ugliest alien reveal you could imagine. Dear God, that thing is nasty. Wow, it's like a crab with a cleft palate. Ugly motherfucker. Dude, right? But, uh, maybe don't say that to his face. Predator spreads his arms in a warrior stance, and the match of the century begins, even though it's a bit of a slow one. Oh well, at least you get a blood spit fountain. After a solid bit of getting his ass kicked, Dutch crawls away to his little Dutch ditch, where one of his traps is set. But, come on, Dutch. Predator is smarter than all that. Even with your very convincing performance of a dude who wants Predator to kill him. Kill me, I'm here! Kill me! Come on, kill me, I'm here! Come on, do it now! Instead, Predator goes goes around and takes the long way to Dutch, only for us to see that that way is trapped too. Dutch kicks it into action and sends that tree falling down into Predator, smushing him against the jungle floor. But Predator ain't a deaditor just yet, and after Dutch sees him moving, he takes a rock to smash open his headeter. Before he does though, he has a simple question for the Pred Man. What the hell are you? Predator's only response for him is to reach over and fuck with his wristbound doodad, which appears to begin a sort of countdown. <laughs> that can't be good. Predator confirms its malice intent when it creepily echoes Billy's laugh as Dutch runs away. Way. <laughs> The final kill of the movie comes accompanied by a bunch of wacky special effects as Dutch runs away from the Predator's self-destruction, which results in a frickin' mushroom cloud seen by the rescue chopper flying around nearby. And by the way, Predators go on the count even though Xenomorphs didn't because, uh, I, I don't know, they're more humanoid? Just, uh, I don't know, it's fine. The chopper pilot is Kevin Peter Hall in an unmasked cameo, and he lands the bird to finally rescue Dutch. The movie ends with both Anna and Dutch aboard the chopper flying away to safety, kinda like the ending of Jurassic Park. Only Jurassic Park didn't have a frickin' credit sequence featuring the cast acting like their characters from a goddamn network drama. Are you serious with this shit? What the fuck? When did this become too many cooks? I don't really mind, it's kinda fun, except for the fact that Arnold Schwarzenegger couldn't be bothered to do anything fun or even look into the camera like everyone else. Maybe Arnie thought too many cooks would spoil the broth, but listen, we're not here to make a stew, even though we've got Carl Weathers, baby. We're here to tally up kills, so let's get to the numbers! Do it now, come on! By my count, there were 76 kills in Predator. 75 of them were human males, and the last was our crab-faced Predator. So at least we can spice up this blueberry pie with a little bit of extraterrestrial flair. With a runtime of 107 minutes, we wound up with a kill on average every 1.41 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to Dylan. The arm getting blown off and continuing to fire the gun is a classic shot, and it's followed up with a nice use of Predator's blades. Good stuff. Doll machete for lamest kill will go to any of the gorillas who were shot, because seriously, it's so boring to just see guys standing there and jerking around as squibs go off on their bodies. And that's it. Predator came out in 1987 and is often cited as one of the best action movies of all time. It was followed by Predator 2, which nobody considers the best of anything, and which I'll be covering next week. Until then, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching this Kill Count. I want to thank a couple of patrons like Nicole Hansen and Stephen Campbell. Predator is definitely one of those movies where the more I watched and learned about it, the more I liked it. First time I watched it, I thought it was just a lame action movie. But no, man, The Predator is fucking awesome. Quote me on that, I fucking love The Predator. Who do I like more, Predator or Alien? Fucking Predator. The Alien movies are better, but fucking Predator's dope. Be good people.